and welcome to the Lee Stafford Education Masterclass Live. My name's Jess and I'm going to be your host for the next hour. So if you have any questions at all or any comments, just jot them down in the comment section. It can be absolutely anything from the haircut you're about to watch to the hair industry in general, Lee's personal life, does he have Botox or his teeth real, does he wear fake tan, absolutely anything. There's no such thing as a silly question. In fact, I encourage silly questions. So let's have some fun and learn some hair. And on that note, here he comes all the way live from our living room. It is, of course, the man, the myth, the, med the legend, Lee Stafford. Woo! There he is. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yeah, well, thank, you. thank you, Jess, for that introduction. That was lovely. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And hello, everybody. Welcome to another Lee Stafford Education uh, Live Masterclass. Uh, my name's Lee Stafford, and I'm going to be doing some hair for you today. So the haircut that I'm going to be sharing with you today is um, a twist on the uniform layer. There's been a lot of talk recently about the mullet on women and men. So what I'm gonna show you today is how we can use the classic uniform layer, but twist it a little bit to give us a on-trend mullet. So let me share with you first of all what I've done with the pre-sectioning because we know how important the pre-sectioning is to set us up for the whole of the haircut. So. What we've done is we've done a classic uniform layer horseshoe on the top there. I just took a centre parting all the way down the back to just behind, or just below the crown, should I say. And then from the recession and the recession on each, top, on each side, and we've gone right the way back to that point there. So to measure that uniform layer, pre-sectioning on the top. Can anyone tell me what is the mathematics to that um, sectioning from the top and the underneath? Mm. How do we measure it? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I probably can't, because I'm not a hairdresser, but I know we do have, um, Tony just said hi, so I don't know, maybe Tony could answer that question, maybe. Hello, Tony, how are you Hello. doing? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so how we get the mathematics right for the uniform layer pre-sectioning is once we've done the pre-sectioning on top, we measure it. So we're going to use our comb as a measuring stick right down to the hairline there. And whatever that length is, we want to get it symmetrical on the other side, which it is. Now, if it's not symmetrical, you'll just need to uh, rejig the pre-sectioning. Um, but before you rejig anything, you want to make sure the top is one and a half the length of that comb. So the width of the top is one and a half the width of the sides. That way we get a nice marriage between the top and the underneath of the haircut. It's a classic uniform layer pre-sectioning. All we've done different with this uniform layer is we've taken a section from the temple there. Do you know where the temple is, Jess? Oh, um, is it uh, there? No, what there? No, no, hang on, hang on. Yeah, hang on, when you get a massage on the temple, it's about there, isn't it? Well, it's, yeah, the recession's there. That's the recession, your temple is there. Oh, you yes, see where yes, your yes, right, 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 right. Right. goes down like that, and then like yeah. that. So that's when you get a headache and, and your husband gives you a little, just like that. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, Jess. So we've gone from temple there all the way through. As you can see there, we've gone very, very close to the hairline. So there isn't much hair um, there. It's a bit of a, a gap. And then it's gone through to the um, just below the occipital bone at the back. And we've done that on both sides. And then I've plaited this out of the way. Can anyone tell me why they might think I've plaited this out of the way? 
Questions in the comment box, please. I mean, do I need to answer this or do I wait for someone to, <laughs> to write What do you it? think, Jess? Why do you think we've platted them out of the way? We've platted them out of the way because you're going to leave them and you're not going to cut them yet. Yeah, but why would we plat them? Why wouldn't we just leave them? Oh, because it, it stops them from getting in the way. Stops them getting in the way, yes. And what else do you think? Plat looks really nice. It does look <laughs> nice, yeah. Yeah, that's two things, yeah. It um, looks quite architectural and neat, doesn't it? It looks very, yes. That's what I meant to say, absolutely. <laughs> Any other reasons um, why you might plat them? Well, you plat them so that they're out of the way. They're out of the way. So it means when you start cutting what's above it, there's no risk of you pulling this hair up accidentally and cutting it because it's plaited out of the way. That's so it's a mean, bit, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's exactly like you meant, Jess. Uh, it's a bit of insurance. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we are going to take a section right down the middle of the head. So we're just going to comb this down and we're going to take a vertical section just like we do with our classic uniform layer. And we're gonna pull this straight out from the head. So with the uniform layer, we're pulling it straight out. We're not doing any angles, because if we use any angles, it means that the hair could be getting longer here than it is on the underneath. So we just wanna pull it simply straight out from the head. And with this section, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my classic length comb and I'm gonna go up to my last hole on the on the small teeth. It would be the same if it was on the what are those holes for Lee? What's that? What are those holes in the comb for? It's a very, very good question. I don't know what them holes are for. Maybe These it's the counting. Holes, What's that? Maybe it's to help counting, help measure. Maybe. I mean, they are they're, they're very good for measuring things, you know, mm. measuring length. So, I mean, when I bring this up, I'm going to use, it's not going to quite be half a comb. So I'm going to pull it right. But you could cut this any length, really. You can literally cut this any length you want. The longer you leave it, obviously, the softer the lock looks going to be and the shorter you cut it the stronger the look's gonna be. So we're just pulling this straight out from the head. Can you see that, Jess? Mm -hmm. I see it very well. Straight out from the head. So if you're happy with that, then you can move on to the next section. I'd always advise, really, maybe take it a couple of goals to get it down to the length you want. Again, just for insurance, you don't wanna get straight in there and cut it and then think, oh God, I've cut that a little bit too short. So just take that first section down nice and sort of slowly and gently because this is gonna be the guide for the rest of your haircut. So okay, I'm happy with that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, what we do with the classic uniform layer, once we've taken that section, we then take, which is a vertical section, we then take a horizontal section all the way around to the front. We call this a T-shirt, a T-section. So I'm just gonna take a section here. Let's see if I can pull it this way so you can see it a little better. And then we're gonna pull it straight the way up. You can see, can you see that guide that I've just yeah. cut there? That was my yes. section there. That's gonna be our guide, so we're gonna take nothing more off of that. And we're now going to follow this all the way around to the front of the head. Can you see that, Jess, what I'm doing? Yeah, that? I can see it perfectly, yeah. So now we're going to take another horizontal section all the way to the front. Yep, see it? See it? Yep, well, it's gone very bright. I think the sun's just popped out where you are. No, it That's hasn't. It's nice, in a nice way. It looks lovely. Um, straight up. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to... Make sure that all this length here is exactly the same length as that first section that we cut. It's not getting longer towards the front, it's not getting shorter. It's simply the same length all the way around. So this is my last, put it all the way up and cut it all the way around to the front. 
And so it's obviously you could go shorter, you could go longer. Yeah. So what what so if someone said to you, I, I want a mullet, give me a mullet, yeah. what sort would you say, well, this is the sort of length, this is the sort of look you'll get, or would you just be like, This is the standard length for a standard mullet? That is a very good question, Jess. Um what I would do personally, if someone was saying that they were interested in having a mullet, I would Google mullets mm. and I'd find out the kind of length that person likes. Because, you know, a mullet traditionally is shorter on the top and longer at the back. It's all business at the front and party at the back. As our friend Pat Sharp always says, who was instrumental um, in uh, bringing that mullet to life in the 80s. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's all party at the back of business at the front. Exactly. exactly. So, um, but the thing is with modern mullets, you can even have, you know, long bits at the front. It can all be sort of short here, but you can have long bits there, but it's predominantly all about the top. So, um, but obviously there's different, you know, different lengths you can cut the top. You know, I mean, you could cut it down to that kind of length on top, or you could cut it down to there. I mean, Mm. Then, yeah, and that's why it's important that you just get your client to show you, you, know, you Google pictures together, you Google yeah. mullets together, find out, you know, what they like, what they don't like. And, you know, and then words, you know, then, then pictures speak a thousand words, don't they? I think consulca consultation is key on this sort of haircut, isn't it? King, yes, absolutely. King, yes. Okay, so you can see now we've got like this little line. Can you see that line? That I can, yes. Yeah. Sort of goes around the hair now, yeah. Yes. So, so now we've got this lovely guide at the top, and we've got this guide through um, uh, the underneath as well. So, when we take our next section, which will be vertically again, let's just put a little clip in there so you can see exactly what I'm doing. When we pull this up now, not only have we got a strong guide from the top. Can you see that guide from the top there, Jess? Yeah, I can, especially on your t-shirt. Strong yeah. guide there. We've also got a very strong guide from that section we cut vertically as well. So you've got two guides now. So we're just going to pull this up straight out from the head. So we're not over-directing it. It's literally straight out. And then we connect to the hair we've previously cut. And then we'll take another section vertically again, get that hair out of the way. We'll pull this straight up again. And as you can see, we've got a strong guide from the top there. And we'll also have a strong guide from the underneath or the from the previous section through um, the, uh, the vertical part of the haircut. What's a common mistake people might make when doing this haircut? Oh, that was, I thought I'd turn that off. <laughs> was that my mum calling you again? <laughs> What's a common mistake that hairdressers make when doing a haircut like this? When like doing all the cross section, um, not cross section, when trying to measure everything up with the previous section? I think one of the most difficult things to do with any haircut is getting the balance right. It's getting the same length on either side. That's why when you put that T-section in mm. all the way around, you've already got your balance on the top and you just need to take off what's underneath. And even what's underneath, you've got that section beforehand that you cut vertically. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's all about, you know, getting that balance right. I think that's where people can struggle a lot. Um, and uh, what might be another challenge with this? Another challenge would be picking the length, definitely. But what I've done there, just to cross check this, I've gone horizontally. And what I've done, you can see here, I've got my thumb that's just on the top of the comb. And as I comb it across with the comb, my thumb follows it. And then my thumb acts as a clip. Can you see that? Yeah. So now it's very, very easy for me to pick this up horizontally and check to see if it's all the same length. And that's exactly what you want. You want it to all be the same length. You don't want it to be getting longer or shorter. So just a nice horizontal section. 
pull it. I could probably do it this way actually. Just pull it up, just making sure it's all the same length. Yeah, it's easier to see when you stand behind it like that. Well, it's definitely easier for you to see it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's because the lighting as well. All the lighting just stays nice and. So then we're just going to work our way around the head. Try to keep your sections nice and clean. The cleaner you keep your sections, like I'm doing here, not like I'm doing here, the more control you have over the haircut. You just, you just don't get yourself in a mess. So I'm pulling it up. I've got my guide up there. I've got my guide from my previous section. So I've got two guides now, which makes it mm. really simple and easy. Do you remember when we were on Celebrity Scissor Hands and yeah. you and I was doing a haircut for the competition and no one was allowed to help me? So I had the two guides, I had the T, and I was following the vertical guide and totally forgot about the horizontal guide. And I was kind of keeping, I was pulling it back a little bit too much. So the entire haircut was off. And I only realized at the last minute before I was going to get judged on it. And I practically practically did the entire haircut just by cross-checking it. I went D -d 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 at the last minute and it looked terrible. What, and I was like, I can't believe way. I did that. Huh? Cross-checking it like this, you mean? Yeah, you know when you pull it and you just you pull yeah. it out just to check everything's neat. I yeah. did that with every single section because it was completely off because I forgot all about that <laughs> top bit and that my heart was going. And I didn't win that competition, did I, unfortunately? No, you didn't. You I didn't, didn't follow the section. You was very good, though. You was very good. Well, I like her, don't I? It's, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure that's why I ended up marrying. Oh, I'm Lee's wife, by the way, if anyone's wondering <laughs> who I am, what I'm doing here. I am married to Lee. We've been married for nearly eight years, and we've been together for, it'll be 13 years in November, Lee. 13 years. And we met on a TV show called Celebrity Scissor Hands, where mm -hmm. Jess was one of the celebrities that I was training how to cut hair for children in need. Yes. So it was all through hair, wasn't it? We and met? you told me off on the first day. So and I fun. never forgave you, did I? Well, you kind of <laughs> must have, because you married me. Yes, yeah, I must have thought, <laughs> at some point I must have thought, you know what, I'll forgive him, I'll marry him, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but what you were saying there about the cross-check, cross-section, cross-checking, sorry. Yes. When you cross-check, if it's, a cross-check is just meant to be a check. Yeah, so, don't don't rely on it to do the entire haircut like I did. No, it will not no. work. If you're, if you're pulling it out, you can take dust off of it, but if there's any more than dust to take off, it means that you know you've um, you've gone off track with the technique, and really you should go back to your original section. In this case, it would be the vertical section, in um, and uh, and get it back on track again. And that's right. all you have to do, isn't it? You just have to go back and like. There's no there's no reason to like stress and get all hot headed and oh. You just have to go back, don't you? And just learn next time, just to make sure you keep following those sections. Absolutely. I mean, if you cross check this, for example and it's getting longer over here, it means that you're over-directing it back slightly. Yeah. So all you would do is rather than over-direct it back like this, you would just go back and you would put it straight out from the head again. And when you adjust it and check it, then it should be the same length. Yeah. So the cross-checking is always just a check to make sure. It's just a check, people. It's, it's not a cut. Different. It's not called a cross-cut. Got a cross check. Just a check. <laughs> so this is a very, very methodical um, pattern as we work round to the front. We're just sectioning everything vertically, and we're pulling it all straight out from the head. There's no over direction. There's no under direction. It's just straight out from the head. We'll cross check it again this way just to check that we're all going in the right direction, which we are. And that's done. That is done. So I'm going to take these out now. These so this is one of your recipes that you've slightly adapted. Yeah, this, you know, the whole point of these 
online masterclasses that we've been doing for the last god how many have we done there? i think we've done six or eight mm. uh, and we're going to be doing i think it's 24 or 26 next year the whole point of them is to show the students because the students have been learning how to do a um a uniform layer day to day uh, in the college as part of our curriculum so this is showing you how you can create a completely different look uh, but by stretching or squeezing that uniform layer. So all these online masterclasses are designed to give the students more repertoire in their looks with the classic repertoire. 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 With the classic recipes that they're, that they're learning on a day-to-day -day basis in the college. And this is a perfect example because this is the classic uniform layer um, but we're going to leave some pieces out on the underneath that are longer. Uh, we're going to blend them in slightly, um, but that will give us this kind of mullet feeling. Mm. Well, it definitely will give it a mullet feeling. But it's, it, it, it hasn't been cut any different apart from the pieces that we've left out. Right. Okay, so... I mean, the possibilities are endless, aren't they? They really are. They really, really like, are. literally infinity. <laughs> So that's why we say follow the rules of the recipe until you can yeah. hit that big 10, ten standard <laughs> and then break every rule in the book. Mm -hmm. Because when you can hit that big 10 standard, it means you're technically sound. And then it doesn't take much to kind of twist it up to get hundreds of different big 10 looks, you know, and our big yeah. 10 is the Michelin star equivalent. So, okay, so you can see now that they have been left out. So now we're going to go through to the top. I'm not going to do this other side because this other side would be cut exactly the same as this side. The only difference would be is whereas on this side, because I'm right handed, um, I would be put. Oh, no, let me get this. <laughs> you, I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I knew the only difference would be no, no, my body position would stay exactly the same for the other side. This side, I would be pulling it like this. This side, I'd be pulling it like this. So I'm not going to do this side just for the sake of time, but you would do exactly the same thing on this side that you've done on that side. Gotcha. Gotcha? Got ya. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to take a, we're going to take a section all the way through the top. It goes slightly darkerly when you when you get closer to the camera. Okay. Let me uh guys, by the way, if you've got any more comments, any questions, even if you just want to show some love, jot anything down in the comments. We've got Tony watching, Michael, Hello, Tony. Gina, Jane. Hi everybody. Hello, Mike. Hey, have you here? Who else is there? Tony, Georgie, Jane, how are you all guys? Okay, so now we've done a section right through the top. This is like a sort of mohawk section we've done right through the middle. Let me make that a little bit thicker actually at the front. So, so you cut hair, didn't you, Jess, on Celebrity Scissor Hands? I do, yeah, I cut hair for very intensely for two weeks. It was meant to be three, but I was working the first week. Do you remember? Somewhere else. So I joined the show a little bit late, and I had a very intense course on cutting hair. But the thing is, I think I was at an advantage because I, was, I loved hair anyway, and I was always very fascinated watching my hairdresser, how she layered and how she pulled the hair out and the sectioning and things. So I was definitely at an advantage that I, I really enjoyed it and I was interested anyway. You loved hair, didn't you? You always had hair. I'd say I'm very passionate about hair. <laughs> You've just had okay. a haircut, haven't you, Lee? Looking very nice. A haircut, yeah. Matt had a bit of a haircut. Lee. <laughs> okay, so I'm now pulling this straight up again. Can you see that guy that we've got just there? I can. Do, your, your beard is just behind it. It's blending into your beard. Let's see if I can get my... There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be able to see it better. Can like you that. see that, that guide we've got there? Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it. I can yeah. see it. That's the guide from this section, the first section that we cut. So we're simply...
going to follow that through. I'm now going to use the points and the scissors because I want this to be a little bit more textured rather than blunt cut. So I'm literally just going to follow this all the way through to the front now. And how do you set, how do you decide the length of that? Is that following the section? That's still? going to be that's a good question, Jess. That is going to be exactly the same length okay. all the way through to the front. So nice and simple. So it's so far, simple. everything that you've cut has been the same length coming out the head. Exactly. Amazing! Just, I think I could do this haircut. <laughs> I say. Yeah, <laughs> really it's not. a simple haircut. And the thing is, I think that a lot of people think that the uniform layer, for some reason, is a kind of old-fashioned haircut. I think it's because a lot of the um, more um, mature ladies, like our grandmothers that um, got into colleges uh, and had their roller sets, the uniform layer... Uh, is a haircut that they kind of all have. But the uniform layer is, you know, it could be worn on a on a 90-year-old woman or it can be worn on a on a young teenager. Mm. You know, it all depends how you how you squeeze, stretch it, how you finish it, uh, what products you use. Um, it can it's a very, very modern uh, method. Is the uniform layer, do you end up with Every, all the hair on your head all being the same length or does it start to change as you get closer to the well the class is a good question jess the classic uniform layer would pretty much be the same length all the way over oh okay uh you know as simple as that but again you know you can you can do so many different things just for example if you start pulling the fringe back then it would be quite long around the front when yeah it came to the side area if I started pulling the sides back, it yeah. would get longer towards the front. Yeah. You know, on the back, you know, you could start to let it go longer. There's there's so many things you can do to uh, create different shapes with the uniform layer. So to Tony Candy says, so this is a uniform slash mullet. It's it, it's going to end up, look, thank you for that question, Tony. It's going to end up looking like a mullet. Um. But it was a uniform layer technique that created it. And is that how all, all mullets are started, do you think? With some, some sort of a classic uniform layer? Um, they're they're pretty much, yeah, I would say so. I mean, you know, especially around the top. I mean, don't get me wrong, some mullets you could go like this and then you could get to the front and then you could angle your scissors, yeah. your comb like that. So you get more like a spike at the back. What's that? You get more of like a spike oh. sticking up there. Yeah, it's a bit like how we cut the long graduation. It just means mm. it'd be shorter through the front. You'd get it more, it'd be shorter through this front area. And you're right, Jess, you'd get more length mm. around here. So there you go. So I've cut that top section. See that top section? Love it. I think you should leave it like that. It's no, done. No. It looks mwah. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to take another vertical section. And what we're going to have now is we're going to have two very strong guidelines again. We're going to have the strong guideline from the top that we've just cut there. And we're going to have a very strong guideline from the side. So all we need to do now is cut off what's in the middle. So if I pull this up, can you see that, Jess? Yes, I can see that guide very well, yeah. See the guide there from the... Yeah. Side. You can see the guide there from the top. We've just got that bit in the middle. I'm going to use the points and the scissors just so we get more of a textured finish on the hair rather than it being too blunt. And then that's connected now. And then we're going to take another vertical section and the same again. We put it straight the way up and we've just got that bit in the middle to take off. So is this girl going to have a bit of a fringe then? It's not going to be like a super short fringe, is it? It's going to be... Well, that's a good question. I mean, there's so many things you could do with that now. Mm. I mean, you could cut it really short. You could leave it long. You, you could, could have like a really thick 
fringe, couldn't you? you and could like, have opened it back a little bit and left mm. it quite a bit longer and had a kind of shag feeling fringe. You yeah, know? that's what I was going to say. Everyone's different. everyone's referencing mullets as like shags now as well. Everyone's like, oh, it's like a shaggy mullet. Was it always like that? Was that just what people are saying now? Well, the shag was kind of a 70s thing and uh, a mullet was an 80s thing. But so they kind see, of blended in probably at some point together, maybe. Absolutely. I mean, really, what makes, what defines the shag is the big sort of heavy fringe coming forward. Yeah. What defines the, the mullet, really, is kind of shorter on top and shorter at the sides. Yeah. So you can definitely blend them all in. I mean, like, for example, I could have definitely over directed when I came when I was doing this front piece instead of pulling it all straight up like that we could have definitely cut it a bit more like that really that. heavy yeah it, absolutely and then would that be more like a more shaggy then it, it could have been yeah absolutely and then you know we could have let we could leave all these front bits longer yeah, and that would, you know, so you know, there's there's many ways you can. I love hair so much. It's like the options are just endless, isn't it? And the vibes and the looks and everything. Absolutely, and that's why it's so important to, you know, learn the recipes mm. in their full entirety first. You know, get really good at doing them. Get as good at doing them as what me and the staffs do them in the video. Because once you can do that, like we said earlier, you're technically done. Then you can start to mash them up, you know. Then you can start to, you know, squeeze them, squeeze them, and stretch them, and, yeah. and you know, all these different looks from that classic recipe that you're learning in the college. It's all the basics, isn't it, that you need? So we've got a question there, Jess. We've got a oh. few questions. Oh, hello, Amy Brand. Uh, do you? Oh. Do you do any training outside of college? Did my level two at Abingdon, currently doing level three, and would love to do more. Let's get that up on screen. You get that lead? Want me to read it again? Um, Amy Brandt, do you do any training outside of college? Did my level two at Abingdon, currently doing level three, and would love to do more? So like some extra lessons maybe, Lee? Well, that's, that's a good question, Amy. Thank you for that question. And next year, like I say, we're doing the, um, I think it's 24 or 26, uh, online masterclasses like this, um, and they will be available to watch later on YouTube. So all the recipes that you're learning in college at the moment, you know, you'll be able to watch all these new recipes that are based on the recipes you've been learning on your level two and level three. Mm. So they'll really be synergized with what you've been learning. And you'll really be able to understand them because you know, you've been, you know, like I say, doing the recipes like we've been doing them. You've been using the same language. So you'll definitely be able to watch our masterclasses online. Um, but to be quite honest with you, um, as much education as you can get, the better, Amy, especially when you're learning. I mean, you know, when you finish college and when you finish your apprenticeship, really, that's that's the beginning of your journey. Yes, you've done the first part of your training, but training is a is a lifelong quest. It really is. And, you know, in today's modern world, you know, we're very fortunate with the internet that there's a lot that you can learn um, from, you know, from the internet. I mean, it does take a lot of drive and a lot of passion and determination to, you know, spend your time, you know, learning online because we know that, you know, there's lots of things we could spend our time doing, you know, on Facebook, mm. TikTok, Instagram. I mean, you know, it, it's that chat. It's endless, you know, Netflix. I mean, you know, so, you know, to spend your time online learning um, is very valuable, you know, for your yeah. education. Um, and, you know, you can bet your life, you know, a lot of people are not doing it because a lot of people, you know, their time – you know they're spending it elsewhere. You know, so but there's but but saying all that, it's really good. Can you see what I'm doing here, Jess? Can you see where as I'm pulling that up? I've got them two guidelines. I can see, but your face. Try to get your t-shirt behind it, so we've got a white. Well, hey, yeah, there we go. I can see it. See that guide. Yep, we can see the guide. See that guide. That's the guide from the side. That's the guide from the top. 
All I'm doing is connecting, taking it off through the middle. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of like like actors, hairdressers, musicians that learnt a lot just from watching, like Justin Bieber or whatever, just learning by watching YouTube, lot watching all the professionals, watching the masterclasses. Absolutely. Like online learning is incredible and so flexible. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the thing is, the great thing about online learning is that it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter if you are, you know, in some remote place in the corner of Scotland somewhere, you know, um, you can just go online and learn. You really can. You know, it's down to you. It's how much time you yeah. want to put in. It's how much time you want to spend practising. Uh, and, and, and we encourage you guys because this – this uh, uh, online masterclass that you're seeing me do and all the others that the staffs have done, they will be on YouTube very, very shortly. So you can go back and watch them. And we encourage you to um, practice them on your friends, on your family. You know, get your mum sitting down, your dad. I certainly did that when I was learning. You know, maybe not the mullet on your name, but you never know. She might be up for it. But, you know, just practice on real people because... You know, it, it's just great experience. I mean, don't get me wrong, mannequin heads are brilliant, but they cost money, don't they? You know, and um, where, you know, getting your friends to sit down, um, you know, it, it doesn't cost Listen, you. You will have friends that want a haircut. All my friends, even though they know I'm not a hairdresser, but I'm married to one of the best hairdressers in the world, they still ask me to cut their hair. Like, oh, can you give me a little layer? Can you give me a fringe? I'm like, ask Lee. And they're like, no, no, I want you to do it. You will always have friends that are like, yeah, I'll sit down. You can lay my hair. You can do this. Exactly. And, you know, it's a lovely bonding time. And also, I think if you're someone like me who's a little bit shy and maybe doesn't want to, maybe doesn't feel 100% comfortable going into, like, a big learning environment, maybe if you're, like, more of a mature student like I was when I went to drama school, that's ideal when you when you are online because you can do it on your own, have a cup of tea, do it in your own time. You don't need to worry about anyone's thinking because you're doing it all yourself. Absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, it is good, guys, now and again, to go out to places like Sound International or, you know, or, or you know, if there's any live events happening. They, it's great, you know, to go to a live event. I mean, I know COVID stopped all of that for a while, but... You know, because you meet other hairdressers, you know, you can, um, you know, it's just, it's like, it's like watching a live concert or listening to music at home, you know. You know, mixing it up um, just creates, you know, that um, added excitement and that added, that added learning, really. Mm. Okay, so I've done that on that side, yeah? Ooh, now there she is. There she is. Now, I'm not going to do... The other side because it would have been exactly the same on the other side i would just literally have you know taken my vertical sections pulled it up use that as a guide that piece on the top there mm -hmm. see that? Use that side as uh, a guide and i would have done exactly the same i've just done done it this way so for the sake of time i'm not going to cut the other side but you can see this side's done now yeah yeah love it so this How many doll's heads have you got in there, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that. So that's what I did earlier. I love it. <laughs> wow. So, look, there's many ways now that you can tweak this head. So I'm going to start off just at the sides. Let me get there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull this hair up. And can you see this hair? that's just sitting above it, Jess. Can you see yes, that? Yes, I can, but I do want to know how much hair you've picked up and where you've picked it up from. Right, so, okay. So we've got the side piece of hair. Remember that piece that I left out? Yes, in the plaid. Uh, this side piece is just this piece left out here, right? So like, yeah, just like and that. A little piece, yeah? Yeah. So I'm going to do a vertical section. going to pull it up. And you can see that hair that's yeah. above it, aren't you? Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do with the shank of my scissor, so I'm not going to cut it. I'm not going to actually do that. It's like this. Hang on. So the shank is the bit right, right in there. the middle, right, right in the middle there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to cut it like you would do a pair of, you know, like you'd cut a piece of paper where you go like that. Yeah, yeah. wrapping paper at Christmas. Exactly. So now just going to go down. Very gently, 
And with this kind of thing, you want to take your time because you can always go and cut. Oh, so you've taken it quite sure that I thought you were going to go all the way along. I see what we're doing now. Yes. See, there's a piece of hair there as a guide. Yep. I'm not closing the scissors, just using the shank. So it's a bit like a razor, really. And how do you know how long to leave that? How do you know where to? That's a good question. Are you just feeling it? You're just going with it? What I'm doing here is all now visual. Okay. So I'm just looking at this visually and thinking, do I like the look of this? So I'm just picking it up, combing it down, looking at it visually. Now I'm going in with the points and the scissors. Mm -hmm. Just visually now. Right, so that piece is done, right? You could leave this piece here. This, this, yeah, you could leave this. You could blend it in very, very loosely. You could leave that long if you wanted to. Yeah. It's a real preference to what you do. So just on the sides, I'm just working with the sides here. So again, I'm going to take this. You can see, can you see that? Set? Can you yeah, see that? Yeah, yeah. It's a really good, yeah, I can see it all. You see that piece, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go down with a shank and a scissor again. Just taking that hair off nice and gently. Is this what you'd call face framing, this bit? Um, I suppose so, yeah. It, change. it can change very much the shape of the face, can't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you want to be very mindful to, you know, your – it means – it's all about suitability as well. You know, it's yeah. all about, you know, what suits someone. And it can be like a proper collaboration with the client. You'd be like, what should we do with these long bits? Do you want it longer? Do you want it shorter? How are you, how are you feeling so far? Absolutely. I think, again, uh, you know, if you're, if, you're, um, if you're looking at pictures, you know, on Google, it's going to give you a very good idea. You know, if they're, if they're showing you pictures where the sides are really short, then – you know, they're going to like the side short. The yeah. is where there's a bit of length at the side. I mean, it's amazing because I love it short like that. I really like that. And then we've got Michael Saunders who's put, leave it long. So <laughs> the difference is crazy, isn't it? Well, there you go. And That's Tony, it. leave it. It's like, it just depends yeah. on what you like. But you can leave it. That's the easy thing, isn't it? That's a great thing. Well, that's the beauty of, you know, um, you know mashing up these classic recipes. Because you can really make them personal, even though at least Stafford Education, we're always talking about um, standardisation. You know, this has been a very standardised way that we've cut this. It's a classic uniform layer. But now we're making it personal. Yeah. And like Mike said, Mike and Tony might have left that a bit longer. I can know? see them doing haircuts, especially Tony doing like a crazy haircut with like all coming down the sides, dyeing it green. I can see him doing that it's, in his salon. Exactly. So this is where you can really, really make it your own. Even though we've standardised, you know, the um, the fundamental of the recipe, you can really make it your own. So, so Tony, this, Tony said, it's not what you cut off, but what you leave on. Exactly, my friend. I'll tell you why I like it a bit shorter. This And this is my lifestyle because I wear big hoop earrings. And I would literally want that little bit taken away to leave space for my huge hoops and my big there earrings. Right there. there you go. And around the back here, so there's that. Can you see that guide there? Yeah, this is the party yeah. at the back. So yeah. now we can just blend in that in very, very loosely. Oh, hey. And again, we're just using our eyes now, right? Just Yeah, just want to blend it in very, very loosely. So there's a bit of connection, but it's still very, very disconnected. And we're going through this vertically, like we have the whole haircut. Well, we've got a question. It's kind of, yeah, it's, we've got a question from Laura Nash. I'm going to read this out to yeah. you. Are you meant to leave a gap where the ear is? Was wondering if it's possible to section slightly higher above the ear to have more hair over the ear. Absolutely. That is a good question, Laura. A good question, and Laura, Laura, that is going to be complete preference. You know, I did my, if you remember how we did our 
tree section in here, it went from the temple there, and it went through, and I and I and I left very little. Uh, I, I left hair out there, so I didn't want loads of hair over the ear. But you could have done that higher and left more hair over the ear. So you know you can tweak this. It just goes to show you that just with the pre-sectioning, yeah. you know, you create so many different looks. Just how um, how you pre-section the haircut in the first place. Mm. So then we're going to go on to the other side. And how would you trim a mullet when you go back? That's a good question. I mean, you'd do it exactly the same as we've done it now. It would be no different. You would just do it exactly the same method. You'd pre-section it to begin with, and then you'd go through it methodically like I've done it here. There's the guide there. So and I suppose you could, you could say like, what do you like about the mullet? What what do you want to keep? What do you want to chop off? And they could say, well, I want to grow the fringe out. I want it a little bit shorter at the top. And you, you can all just start to grow into whatever they like. So now I'm just going to pick it up randomly and just blend it in a bit more. And again, this is visual now. I'm just combing it, just looking at the hair, thinking, am I getting a nice blend there? Because even though this is still incredibly disconnected from – the hair above it, you know, I want it to look like um, visually it's kind of blended in. So what we're really doing here is we're creating a shape like that. You know, from this piece here, we're layering it like that. Guys, so just I... let me know if you can see, Lee, okay? It's gone ever so slightly fuzzy, my end. It might be my computer. Just give me a thumbs up or just give me a yes. If Lee is in focus, you can see him. Are we all following this? Just send me a little, little bit of reassurance. Give me a little thumbs up. Tony, Michael, Amy, Jordan, Jane. Can we see this? It, it is fuzzy, but I can still see. So it's a little bit fuzzy. Wi-Fi is a funny thing, isn't it? Well, James, it's it's we've, done, we've done everything we can to try to. Uh, well, we've, we've, we've even ordered that Elon Musk um, satellite, haven't we? We have, because, yeah. And, and and all they do with that Elon Musk satellite is they just let you know when they've got it. You've got to pay for it, and they let you know when you've got it in your area. So we're playing the waiting game, aren't we? So, guys, it has gone a little bit fuzzy. I do apologise. Am I fuzzy? <laughs> Let me know if I'm fuzzy because I'm plugged into the Wi-Fi. So next time we can actually move this around a little bit, Lee, and you can be in here and we can get it nice and sharp. Guys, am I fuzzy or am I good? Everyone says, Lee, you're a bit fuzzy, but but people can see. Okay. So now the fringe. So now with the fringe, you can really decide how, you know, there's so many ways you could cut this fringe now. Let's put it down a little bit. Is that a bit too far down? That's probably a little bit. Too. I don't think she needs to be that low. Bring her up a little more. Okay, so I'm just literally going to put my fingers in like this. My fingers are going to rest directly on the scalp. So they're, they're right on the scalp. Let me put her head down a little bit so you can see this. Right on the scalp. And then I'm going to go in. Point in my scissors. So we get more of a textured feeling on the front. Love it. So I'm standing behind my fingers. Can anyone tell me what the difference would be by me putting my fingers on the scalp or me lifting it up like that? Can anyone tell me what different result we would get at the moment my fingers are right on the scalp but what would be the difference guys write your answers in the comment section what would be the difference if lee has his fingers on the scalp 
as opposed to lifting his fingers off of the scalp. Now, I know this because I did it by accident whilst cutting my little girl's fringe. So now, now we can go in and do whatever we want with this, really. I mean, now we've put in the main shape. You know, you can start just sort of sculpturing it now. Can you see that one I'm doing now? I can. Um, I'm afraid it has gone quite fuzzy, but I can... Has it? Yeah, it has. Guys, next time we're going to change this up. Lee's going to be in this room. It's going to be crystal clear. We're going to be shooting in here for next time. But I can. I can still see a sh I can still see the shape. You can. But am I fuzzy? Is it slow? Or is so it... So you're, you're on speed. It's um, yeah. it's just it's gone very fuzzy. I have a feeling it's worse for me than what it is for everyone else. So, so this is now. yeah. If you if you end up doing your scissors at that angle, you're going to get more of a choppy kind of fringe. And if you do it like that, you're going to get more of a diffused, softer kind of fringe. So. If I go in an angle like that, you can see I'm going to start to, you know, really sort of break that fringe up and uh, and make it very, very textured. So I'm just combing the hair very, very natural now. I want the hair to fall very naturally, how her hair would naturally fall. And then with the points of my scissors. I can see any client having this done would immediately go into the colour chair and have some crazy colour put on it. I yeah. have, or have all the different set. of my friend Jane, she's just gone and got a bright green fringe and these bits down here are green and the rest of it is all red. I mean, I love yeah. it because it reminds me of Christmas. Or you could, or you could just do something very... You know, it could be a simple blonde colour, you know. Or... Like Look at me, I'm like, crazy haircut, crazy colour. But yeah. actually, you can just have a very, you can have a very natural colour and have this exactly. hairstyle, can't you? Okay, so I could be tweaking this for a little while. So I've got one that I did earlier, guys. Another head? Is this the fourth one? This is the third one. Third one? Right, you're back in focus now. Wow. You're back in focus? Yeah, you're back. You're back in the game. Everyone so this that is one that awesome. I did earlier. It's It's been cut exactly the same length as the one that I just cut. Um, and I've put a little bit of product on this, put a little bit of sea salt spray, Lee Stafford sea salt spray. I love that so much. Michael's <laughs> put, wow, very nice. Get that up there. But this is just a classic uniform layer with the back left out. I mean, if you cut this half a half an inch shorter, maybe quarter of an inch shorter, I mean, even that with the back calf is a pixie cut, really. Mm. You know, um, you know, a pixie cut really is a uniform layer that's just cut really short. You know, that's textured. Um, that was the first haircut I ever learned to do was a pixie cut. Was it? Mm -hmm. What do you think of that, Jess? I absolutely love it. I mean, don't get me wrong. This, you know, this isn't for the faint-hearted. You know, this kind of haircut. Well, is it though? That's the thing. I think it could be because you can imagine a very quiet, kind of like cool, geeky kid with a haircut like this, big glasses, or someone who's like more of an extrovert and mad. I, I just. I do think it kind of it can suit everybody. I mean, I, mean, it wouldn't, I don't think it would look good on me. My hair's so thick, it would literally go <laughs> like that. But I do think yeah, it's super. I mean, no haircut is for everybody, is it? You know, but this no. is a very sort of Instagram on trend um, haircut at the moment. It really is. Um, like I say, you could have left these sides longer. You really could have done. You know, you could have over directed the front back and left the fringe heavier. You know, mm. just a little squeeze or a stretch 
you can create so many different looks. And that's exactly what we're doing with these online masterclasses. We want to give you guys, you know, all the, all the tools you need that when you go out into the big wide world, that you're completely salon ready. Mm. So um, just a little recap, guys. It's a classic uniform layer pre-section, apart from going from the temple to just underneath the occipital bone. We plaited that out of the way so that when we picked the hair up, we wasn't picking this up by mistake. We did a classic uniform layer all through the top. Then when it came to them bits that we'd left out, we just pulled them out, we saw the guide, and we just gently, just using the shank of our scissor, just blended that uh, short hair into the long hair. We took a fair bit off around the sides because we wanted that to be much shorter than the back, but you could have left it longer. Uh, even around the back here, you know, I've left it quite exaggerated with the length, but you could still take this shorter if you wanted to. You can pick the length that you want. It hasn't got to be this long. could be longer if you wanted to. Um, and then, you know, because I've already gone through and texturized this top, it didn't need a lot of texturizing. You could go through and do some more texturizing on the top if you wanted to. And just around the front, we pulled the hair nice and square, flat on the forehead. And then we just literally cut the fringe down shorter like that to begin with. Again, you can leave that longer to begin with and then go in and start, you know, taking it shorter gently until you're happy with the length. And then we came in this way and just sort of polished it all off, you know, just um, made the fringe a little bit more texture and just personalized it really. You got a big 10 from Tony Lee. Or is no, that a big 10 no, to me? No, I mean, I don't 10, know. Big 10. Big 10. Um, Lee, I would love to see people's um, mullets now. So if anyone's going to try one of these mullets on your friends or on a head, where can they send you the pictures? Where would be the best place? Guys, Lee Stafford Education Instagram. We would love to see any mullets you do, any hair that you do in college. Please, we would love to see it. We'd love to see some little videos. It can just be like quick 15 second videos of you doing some hair, anything, putting a roller in, just doing a little cut, anything. Please send us your videos and pictures so we can share them on our channels and shine a spotlight on you guys. Um, okay, guys, so that was the uniform layer stroke mullet. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. That's the end of our online uh, masterclasses for this year, but we'll be coming back stronger than next year, myself and all the staffs, to bring you twists on the classic LSE recipes that you are learning day to day in the college. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a fabulous week and take care, guys. Speak to you soon. Bye, and everybody. Thanks, you were You're wonderful. Welcome. I've loved thank it. Thank you. Take care, Bye. Everyone. Bye. Bye.